Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. The Butterfly Effect Movie Thoughts Last minute notes yet again. I... I call BS on 13 year old Tommy being able to beat up an older bully. We, we don't really know for sure how old he was, but he was clearly a few years older than Tommy, and he's supposed to be kind of a bully. The, the commentary track suggests that, and, you know, his girlfriend, who only really has, like, two lines, you know, one scolding him for that, and one where she just goes, oh no, stop, please stop, also sort of suggests that he's a bully. Even with the, you know, immediate advantage of, you know, knocking him with the, the steel thing, yeah, I just don't, yeah, the, the, the older guy has more muscles, if he's a bully, he's probably, he's been in fights, you know, yeah, just, it doesn't work, even if he, like, knocked him out, there's only so much he can do with, you know, his, his weight and his muscle as compared to someone older who's won fights against people his own size. Now... I like the little detail of when we see Lenny as a 13 year old, he's building airplane models. And then when we see him, you know, in the first, in, in the normal time, yeah, in the normal setting, he's built tons of these planes. And, you know, it's kind of, it's what he does to, you know, to, to try to relax, to focus on something that he can control. It's, it's one of the numerous details that the film has, where we see something has grown because of a bad event. Now... The... When we see just Evan, you know, the again, in the first time, in the normal time, he's kind of a jerk before he starts time traveling. It's, you know, he, he really has to just stir up a lot of trouble before he accepts that, you know, yeah, I mean... It's fine that he's like reading the notes and trying, you know, that doesn't affect anyone else but him, really. But, you know, he visits Lenny and asks, you know, asks him to go back, you know, remember what happened there, which really upsets him. And he, you know, he goes and talks to Kaylee and she commits suicide. And really, the, you know, the, the suicide is supposed to be the motivator but yeah if it really did he really need to cause something that bad before he you know went back and tried to fix things it kind of yeah now Tommy did not appear to be all that sadistic before the the child porn it seems like that was really what caused it which also you know that's why he focuses on 
Evan with, you know, what he does now, some of the time anyway. When Evan finds, you know, you know, he's, he's frat boy and, you know, he's having a romantic dinner with, with Kaylee and then he finds that Tommy, you know, dug his key inside of his, yeah. And... It's, I like the detail that Kaylee points out that Evan doesn't feel right when it's in the, you know, the, the frat timeline. It, you know, like, like she says, the, the way that his accent, the way he walks, everything is different because he, to him, he didn't live this life. And it, it kind of points to, you know, this is wrong. Like, like his father says, you, you know, we can't play God. It's not right. Now, I think it's kind of interesting that Kaylee says to Evan, you know, she screams to Evan, you'll kill him before he's actually doing, like, the first time she yells it, he's basically still just spraying the, the pepper spray, you know, giving, giving Tommy the Occupy treatment. And yeah, I, I don't know, I, pepper spray is really uncomfortable, you know, she could have just said no, anyway. But I don't think it's going to kill him. And you know, then then he starts beating him and then, you know, once it comes to, you know, once we're talking the, the steel bat, that I believe, that, that's going to cause some, some damage, you know. And, yeah, you know, he grabs that and hits once and even with that, you know, I like that they kept the two one because that is enough. If you hit someone hard in the face with something like that, and again, I have to point out, you know, if, if, Tommy doesn't even shield his face. How how did he manage to beat up that older bully when he was only 13? And he's supposed to be out of juvie, you know. He didn't not not covering his face. That's something really basic in in fighting. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, just the one hit. So it's not not too unrealistic that Evan would keep doing. It. And also just, the, the film has this theme that one thing can really completely change. And yeah, you know, in that case, it was this one hit with, and as also, I noticed this viewing that there's a lot of just, you know, you hit them once and then like, you know, Tommy only uses the, the steel thing on the bully once. Evan only beats him in the face once with the, the thing, you know, and Jason is beaten to death with just one to, to the Again, I believe it, but it's just, it's, it's interesting that they keep, yeah. Now. The, the last time I watched this, I didn't really know Kevin Durand, and ever since Lost, I've been, you know, quite the fan, so yeah, it's funny to see him in such a different role from these badasses, these, you know, this super Christian cellmate. Now, it's, you know, it's, it's noteworthy that not all of the blackouts are traumatic events. The, you know, there, there's a, Basically, something something big happens that he then doesn't remember, like with the knife and the drawing, but it's not something that really messed him up, you know, which points to that it really is his time travel. That That's, you know, 
what we see in the ending, in, in either version of the ending, whether he goes back to, you know, the, the, the party, which didn't seem to be connected to any, you know, trauma, or whether he goes back to his womb. And, yeah, in, in both cases, he can travel back. So, it is the traveling back that causes blackouts, not the, you know, or at least that's, that's what it seems like in, in some of those instances. Now... It's really only in the in the timeline in which Evan's hands and you know hand and arm have been blown off that we see all three of the other characters in you know we see how they turned out. We don't see Lenny in the frat bro outcome, you know, and and Tommy we also only fairly briefly see, you know, yeah, he, he's in the frat bro one, but otherwise not so much, yeah. He leaves that, you know, phone message and let lets Evan know that Kaylee suicided. Now, I did think that it was kind of strange there in the end when basically yeah, you know, he, Evan is told there are no diaries. You made that up to cope with killing Kaylee. Because he started writing diaries before that. I'm almost certain. He, he started writing diaries when, you know, it was, yeah, after the drawing and the knife, I believe, was when he started doing, you know, that's when when it was suggested, the, the drawings. Not after Kaylee, but yeah. And that covers those. I quite like the amount of psychological realism in this. You know, when Kaylee has been forced into child pornography, you know, for one thing, it's someone known to the family and yeah that yeah that's often how rape goes that it's you know there's there's that thing of you know beware strangers in dark alleyways that does happen but more often it is that it's someone that yeah that the family knows and that has spent years around the person that they rape now, but, but yeah, with that, you know, Kaylee grows up without any self-confidence, so she, yeah, she keeps dropping things as a waitress, she, yeah, and the, you know, her, she's used to her sexuality being out of her control, being something that others force upon her, when, you know, we see her be groped. At first, she's like, you know, bothered by it, but then she, you know, just accepts it. And yeah, you know, that's how she's, it's, it's like, you know, seven-year-old Evan inhabited by 20-year-old Evan says, you know, her, you know, her image of trust was ruined by her father, who was a pedophile, you know, and, you know, Tommy becomes violent and abusive in his protectiveness towards Kaylee, especially in, you know, when it comes to Evan. You know, he couldn't protect her from their father and in part from Evan, and he's not gonna let that happen again. You know, like like he says, you know, the two of them had sex, and he can see that that hurt Kaylee, and he can't do anything about his father, so it becomes Evan who was to blame. Because, to his mind, if Evan hadn't been there, 
then, you know, then their father couldn't have forced Kaylee to have sex with anyone. And uh, yeah, it's, it's very much the, you know, it's similar to how the family of a rape woman might accuse her as if somehow she caused herself to be raped rather than attack her rapist who again they might not be able to do much against and with Lenny broken by you know and yeah and we see Lenny has been broken by Tommy's vile acts burning the dog and blowing up the baby although that one was at least by accident and yeah you know burning the dog was taking something from Evan the way you know yeah the the way that Kaylee was taken from Tommy by Evan which again it, you know we just before that you know she says he won't even look me in the eye anymore he's different he's changed since he came out of juvie and yeah it's that thing of or actually that might have been before you any anyway yeah tommy feels like he's losing kaylee to evan which there might be some truth to but yeah it's not that something evan is doing is taking you know or at least yeah you know if, if she's kind of moving away from him it's more that you know he's kind of a psychopath and when Kaylee moves from you know her father and with Evan saying you know you need to discipline Tommy which as I mentioned earlier he didn't I'm not sure he was that sadistic before that I mean suddenly we see him you know hitting Lenny there in the you know what is that first grade I guess some something like that uh, you know but uh, yeah other than that it seems like it's mostly like it, it kind of starts there you know so yeah when Evan says you know discipline Tommy it you know to him you know he doesn't see it as this you know he, he realizes that the child porn ruined Kaylee. He doesn't realize that, you know, that was also what really set Tommy off. We see also, you know, before it, he like he wants to watch. He he wants to. He can tell that something bad is going to happen. So he and and he wants to protect his sister, but he doesn't. You know, his father threatens to beat him, and so he just stays on the stairwell and then we see afterwards he's you know breaking the which which does also happen at the end of you know Evan going back and telling you know the father to discipline Tommy but but yeah you know breaking off the the head of the door or at least what what's it called like wringing its neck and yeah it's when he sees that he you know I'd, I'd say that's when he really starts becoming sadistic or at least that's the first thing we really see of him being really awful in in a way that just you know the him hitting Lenny is kind of you know preview of that we see that he's maybe going down that path and certainly that wasn't the first time his father threatened to beat him and he has beaten him I would definitely say now yes so you know when that happens as Kaylee says it's like you know their father took it out took it all out on Tommy you know rather than spreading it over over both of them and yeah you know when Evan is attacked by Tommy and then fights back he does you know keep beating him I mean he basically had 
you know, Tommy wasn't in any shape to do anything to anyone once the, the you know, pepper spray was used. And then once, yeah, you know, after that he could basically, and, and at least only hit him, but the moment he grabs this aluminum bat, I think, and hits him, you know, yeah, that's when he goes too far. And we understand why, because he has just re-remembered, re-experienced these awful things. He didn't even remember about Mrs. Halpern and the baby, who we later found out is named Katie. So yeah, to, to him, that just happened, basically. And yeah, he, he keeps beating him for all the pain that Tommy caused. And this is also the first time that they were in a fight where Evan had a chance to really fight back. You know, he keeps, each time that there seems to be kind of a chance, or that, that there's going to be a fight, yeah, you know, the first time Tommy just, or just, he takes out his rage on the, the bully at the theater, and the second time is actually the yeah he he basically just dominates Evan with this you know piece of I don't know it look, looks like it might have been a load bearing you know in in some kind of yeah at, at the junkyard you know although he he start he accidentally hits Kaylee first but as we see when Evan comes to, he was clearly hit in the face as well. That that happened even before he went back. And you know, and when he beats Tommy to death, that kind of brings to an end, so to speak, this creepy, surreal, too perfect to be real, you know, life of you know him as a frat boy. You know, like, you know, we, we see how awful it is in the prison, and then, you know, we find out, well, it's, you know, we don't know how long he might have to be in there. You know, it's, like she said, you have to focus on the case. It's, this has to, you know, there needs to be a trial. Yeah. And, and then, you know, when Lenny is, you know, yeah, when when Evan puts the the blade in Lenny's hands, you know, before he says cut the rope, he says this is your reckoning day. This is when you can, you know, redo having you know, yeah, that the how much he was messed up by Miss Halperm blowing up, you know, because he just got back. He was just released after having been, yeah, locked in for, for that to, to cope with that. And as he says, you know, they, they keep screaming, I never want to go back there, you know. And then, yeah, with the blade in hand, he stabs Tommy because, yeah, Miss Halpern, he just got over that. He was just released for that. And it's clearly still messed up. You know, you guys don't have Tommy with you, with you do, with you do you. And you know, Evan later recounts, we went into the forest to avoid Tommy. You know, we we knew he might realize that Kaylee was with Evan and Lenny, and yeah, he really doesn't want Kaylee and Evan together for sure. So. Yeah, they went into the forest hoping that he wouldn't find them out there, and then they see the smoke and realize. And yeah, Lenny has just dealt with Miss Halpern, and then he sees that Tommy is going to burn a dog. And it's Evan's dog at that, you know. So even with the yeah, you know, Evan manages to talk him back out of it, but then Lenny stabs him 
because of this, you know, the, it's kind of, again, it's a theme in the film, the pain causes some further trauma. The, the pain is not just allowed to subside. The, you know, although, again, before the time travel, some of the pain not subsiding is Evan going around and reminding people that, you know, something awful happened to them and him when they were kids, you know, so yeah, but yeah, still, you know, Tommy is messed up even when Kaylee is saved, Lenny is messed up when Tommy is talked out of it, each time the pain, yeah, keeps hurting. And then when, with Evan realizing that the, yeah, that, that with the blockbuster, it, yeah, it's a, it's going to screw up Lenny even if it doesn't screw up Tommy and or Kaylee. And... Yeah, and, and we also saw right from the start that Lenny was the one who was most affected by that. He's, he's very sensitive. And, yeah, the, you know, yeah, he, he basically just, he goes almost catatonic after seeing that. And they have to, you know, pull him, drag him back out and, you know, yeah and with so so with that you know Evan goes back to try to stop the blockbuster the first time and with Lenny and Evan running out there you know Tommy yeah you know some something in him you know yeah he he goes on and tackles Miss Halpern and the baby and you know, Evan didn't realize what exactly, you know, he maybe didn't fully have a plan, and yeah, you know, there, there are elements within it that he can't necessarily, you know, predict and such. He ran towards them and just yelled, no, get away from the, you know, the mailbox, and then when Tommy runs ahead and tackles her, you know, he kind of stops in his tracks, and, yeah, which, I guess, I guess Tommy ran faster, he, he didn't have, Evan had a head start, and Tommy somehow managed to run faster with, yeah, I guess he was that scared of being found out or something, but, yeah, and so Evan suddenly ends up standing right in front of the mailbox, and, yeah, you know, where, yeah, Evan had his one hand and one arm blown off. And after that, Tommy kept being told by everyone that he's a hero. So after a while, he starts believing in it himself, which is, yeah, that's, that's very realistic. The, if a lie is told enough times, eventually people accept it as true. And, yeah, he becomes this sort of, you know, Christian, I don't know, born again, maybe. It's it's not completely certain how much, but, but yeah, some, some kind of, you know, what, what is Evan called? Jesus freak or something, which, yeah. And, yeah, he generally is a good person then. He, he's doing good. And he was, he's doing well at doing good. We we find out that you know brought together and you know doing an awareness thing, and I don't remember exactly what it was about, but yeah, you know, nice, yeah. And that really shows that Tommy does not have to be a sadistic, you know, yeah. Even with the, yeah, it's it's a. There's room for that in him. The same way, you know, with each of them, we see that they can be really, 
yeah you know that they can have a really good life and be a really good person and in several of them you also see that they can really do something awful and such you know I suppose Kaylee doesn't really at any point do something truly awful but then you know it's also Evan really wants to save her and the audience sympathy might suffer if she did something really awful but certainly there are times when when he goes back and she's a prostitute and on drugs she's clearly much more pessimistic and pragmatic you know which makes sense with her life having turned out that way and less inclined to help where when she's with you know I guess we don't see that much with her in the sorority but yeah you know when you see the you know when when Evan has been blown up she actually you know stands up to th those awful awful people laughing at someone handicapped yeah so so yeah you know that not not everyone would you know be able to do that even if most of us would want you know would hope that we could do that in that situation but yeah but but yeah you know you see Lenny killing Tommy which you know he considers he considers right for the but it is very much you know he he walks up on him and just stabs him you know at least with Evan there was a fight and Tommy attacked him directly first but yeah you know there's there's enough Tommy death to go around I guess with with Lenny Evan yeah and the but but yeah you know it's very much you know Tommy sees himself a hero because people kept telling and he takes care of Evan and really you know sympathizes because there is that connection between them when Tommy proved himself a hero Evan was really hurt he he was the victim no one thought that you know that's also a bit harsh if they you know go to the the handicapped 13 year old and say you brought this on yourself you know if if he was a girl living in a red state and he was raped then they would but not in this case in in which case you know even an abortion might be considered you know not necessarily okay I'm gonna try to get off the soapbox now although this is a movie that really brings up values and, and such but yeah it's yeah you know there's that connection the the day that Tommy did something great Evan was badly hurt some in a way that he can never actually you know truly that's getting really dark in a way that really changes his life let's go with that I don't want to take away hope from any you know anyone handicapped watching this and yeah we we see that the blockbuster keeps causing problems you know it's once once heaven realizes that it's gonna mess you know that it, it's gonna mess Tommy up at the very least Tommy and Lenny you know with if then Kaylee moves away away from her father then Tommy just gets even more messed up and becomes violent and abusive and even in the you know and and even if he went back to the the you know the the first time jump back that where he changed something and you know he was in the frat again at some point Tommy would come and attack him and yeah so he you know tries to talk some sense into Tommy and not kill the dog and yeah Lenny 
stabs him because of Miss Halpern. And when when Evan goes back to stop it, once it's already been lit, he he gets blown up. And then finally, he tries to. I guess he wants to try to blow up their father or something. It, you know, he already did try to get you know a knife or something to destroy the blockbuster so it wouldn't blow up at all. But then you know he goes in the basement. I don't know why it is that the father is so calm. He acts the same way towards him that he did when Evan just went back and asked what is going on. You know, he's like, you know, if you don't behave, I'm gonna tell your mother how awful, you know, what, how, you know, you you weren't, you you know, yeah, you were a sport little brat or something like that. You know, he's holding something really explosive and he's holding light to, I don't know, me, my reaction would probably be a bit harsher if it happened again, I mean. And yeah, he, he tries to blow him and of course he can't, you know, he's struggling. See, that's a realistic fight between a kid and someone older. Of course he can't, you know, fully restrain the, the father. I don't even really think he has a plan there because he does, you know, he kind of lights it and then goes for the father and that, yeah. But the father gets it knocked out, of, you know, or throws it, something like that, and it rolls over to Kaylee and this sweet seven-year-old girl who's still innocent because she hadn't, you know, she hasn't been in child porn yet, so she's still innocent, she picks it up and she thinks it was a sparkler or something. And, yeah, and when she holds it right up to her face, yeah, it's, that's going to actually, you know, yeah, that's going to kill her, where, you know, with Evan in front of it and his hands and it being in the mailbox, it only, it only, it blew limbs off, but holding it up to your face, yeah, that's, it's gonna kill you. And it's, yeah, so so basically with the blockbuster, it's it's basically, and I get, the movie's kind of telling us to think the same of Evan that by by their nature they are harmful, and yeah, it's and and thus should never be used or engaged with, yeah, and you know near the the end. It starts being Evan's life, which is ruined. Same, you know, the the way that, you know, it was once he killed Tommy in the first one, where before, you know, he was ruining the lives of Kaylee, Lenny, and if we care, Tommy. The, you know, yeah, going to juvie and ending up being willing to beat someone with aluminum bat. In kind of, you know, he, he can't possibly ex expect to get out of the, you know, he even says, I'm not going to hurt my sister. Yeah, but sh if she's a witness to you beating up, if you, you're going to go back to Juvie, you know, at, at best. Yeah. Now, we, we don't even really know what motivated, you know, what made it that particular day other than that you know this is when Evan you know is awake when he is you know living this life that he didn't always wasn't always living but it's not you know there isn't any direct cause for it to be that night that he attacks it's pretty amazing that the prison scene is shot in a real prison with real prisoners. That, yeah. Now, this does have some time trial inconsistencies. With most of the the trips, they only happen once he does it. You know, when when he returns, something has changed, and that was because he went back in time and changed it rather than it always happening because 
then he would not have lived the normal life that we see at first. And yet some of the time travel always happened. I'm hoping I can drown out the, the noise of the wind. It's, yeah, you know, it's windy here now. So yeah, anyway, yeah, he, you know, when, when he did the drawing and when he got the knife, those should have always happened because those we see the first time around, those we see before he started, you know, time traveling. And as much sense as it does make to, you know, do the drawing right after he's, you know, woken up in jail, I don't know, me, I would probably try to think of something different rather than, you know, killing the, the neo-Nazis, which I, I'm pretty sure they're supposed to be. It's not really explicitly stated, but some of the stuff Evan says to them, it really makes it look like, yeah. And, yeah, and, and then on the other hand, the when he has holes in his hands, those should have always been there since you know, when, when he comes back and he sees he still has the scar from the cigarette, that scar was always there now that he's traveled back in time and came back. That didn't just erupt, you know, he, he doesn't act like it hurts now. We can see it's a really old scar that has been there, you know, for all those years, for seven years. So, yeah. Now... I, in case someone watching this video has not watched all the endings, you know, in the original and the alternate ones, Evan threatens Kaylee and her family. You know, he whispers a threat to Kaylee the first time they meet at age seven or something at a party. And because of that, they, you know, yeah. I'm not entirely sure how that fixes the father, but, but yeah, it, the, the, you know, Tommy and Kaylee both go away and neither of them are ruined by the father. And I guess he never found someone instead of Evan to do the child porn, but, but yeah. And, you know, originally the, yeah, there, there are a few different options that they just pass each other as 20 year olds, both of them successful. One where, you know, they talk, one where Evan follows her and she doesn't, yeah, and one where Kaylee turns but walks off just as Evan turns. And then we have the director's cut in which the home movie he watches is of, you know, his own birth. And he strangles himself in the womb, causing, you know, another miscarriage. And the, yeah, you know, there's, there's the, the mention of, you know, first she had two miscarriages, she tells him, and then when we hear the line again, she says three miscarriages, and then when she says the name, she says Allison rather than Evan. So she had another child, and as we also see, you know, when they're holding, you know, the, the floral pattern suggests that it is, you know, that it is a girl because, you know, better start that, you know, gender identity, you know, early. I'm not gonna go off on a rant on this, on that, in this video. Anyway, yeah, that, that suggests that all her, you know, the two stillbirths she had before, they were also male and they went through the exact same thing. And they ended up suiciding just like Evan. And yeah, because they now have a girl and it's with a different man. So, you know, even if they do later have a boy, I don't know, I guess the, the writer directors wanted to be absolutely certain that it didn't accident or and that we understood that it wouldn't. But yeah, you know, 
she's not having another child with, you know, Evan's father, and he also went to the institution fairly soon after Evan's birth, as far as I understand, because Evan doesn't really seem to remember his father. And yeah, because of that, you know, he doesn't have any more children, certainly not any male ones, let alone any male ones. And so the, the curse is broken. The, the line is, is broken. And yeah, this is, you know, cynical, bitter, ugly message of an ending and yeah basically saying that some people only cause harm and yeah that's the kind of message you expect in birth of a nation triumph of the will or the like not in a recent studio released film and i want to say i hope no one suicides from this i i tend to say a movie can't make you do something that you aren't already, you know, on the way to doing. It can go, only give you that push. But in this case, yeah, if if you're, if anyone watching this is already suicidal, it's possible that this will give them that push. And I hope that doesn't happen. And and that it hasn't happened. And. You know, I, I want to say that, yeah, to anyone watching, no one only causes pain. No matter what you think, you have done good for other people. Someone really cares about you. And, yeah, and, and just try not to focus on the pain. And... Yeah, to try to find and do more of what gives you hope and spend more time with the, if you can, with the people who do really appreciate you and if you can, avoid the people who make you feel awful. I have talked about the idea of someone being evil and the idea of getting rid of people who are supposedly evil, rather than just re restate that, I'm going to link to those videos. And if we are pointing the finger at anyone, technically it's the father of Kaylee and Tommy. You know, even if they, again, I'm pretty sure they move when they're like 13, rather than, yeah. I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the case. And so that means they still spent all those years with him and it wasn't Evan who caused their father to beat at least Tommy. We don't know for sure about Kaylee. It's, it's not clear if he beat her many times before we, the, the time we know for sure that he has beaten her. That was when the. That was when they were thirteen, not seven. So. Yeah, the the. Yeah, so so by then there's a lot of times that he could have beaten her and possibly him. And. Yeah, even if he doesn't do it with them, he could have children with someone else. And, you know, he might not even be in the sex offenders registry, which even doesn't always protect, you know, some... Yeah, but again, that's subject for a different video. But, yeah, you know, there, there are cases where someone will go and have children and or bring their own children into a you know, romantic relationship with someone who has, you know, yeah, done awful things to children. And yeah, it, it just seems like, I mean, again, I'm not saying, you know, you know, kill him or anything like that, but I just feel like maybe he should have ended up 
you know, in prison and or sex offender registry, you know, some kind of, make, make it clear that it won't happen again. Because again, even if he didn't find, you know, another Robin Hood for the child porn, he's still going to do some awful things, especially, you know, when, without Evan going back in time and telling, you know, having, having Kaylee yell, you know, don't ever touch me again. And, you know, this whole thing, what's stopping their father, you know, from doing so. So, yeah. I think the humor works well. In, in the commentary track, they talk about how they had to cut some of the jokes. And from what they mention, I am glad they cut those. But yeah, it really helps. This, you know, this is such a dark film. And with glimmers of hope, there's still a lot of really, you know, awful events and such and I find that the black humor and some of the sex jokes really work you know the the I love Ethan to play in these role you know I love him in American History X I love him in this you know stomper with you know oh hey I found your shirt and you know and probably the girl knew that it was his shirt because she knew that, you know, like she says to Evan, yeah. And I love when Evan makes them leave him because they were, you know, they were on his bed, like, you know, get out. And they're both, you know, in the in the sheets and, you know, it's kind of revenge for the, the earlier with the shirt. And, you know, oh, be gentle, be gentle, I'm post coil. <laughs> and just... Yeah, the, the whole thing with, yeah, and the, I, I haven't actually, I, the, the, the new, what's it called, Constantine, the new Constantine show, I haven't watched it, I've only watched the reviews done by my friend Kiramid Head, and I want to see if I can pronounce this correctly. Deus Deacon, I guess, off you know Channel Awesome. But is is the the not the first in the pilot, but the second female partner of Constantine's. Is that the girl who is in this asking Evan to read? It, it she, she looks really familiar. At least I I might go that look that up. But yeah. And she certainly, yeah, in in this, <laughs> kind of kinky. This is, you know, reading this really awful stuff. And, they, oh, keep going, keep going. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. And the, you know, I, I quite like the, the, when, you know, Evan wakes up and he thinks he's back in, he thinks it's Thumper again on, you know, on his bed. And so, you know, it's Lenny and he looks happy and he, you know, he's not overweight like he is when things have gone wrong because, you know, he's not moving so much. So he did gain some weight and, you know, he, he was happy and, you know, we don't at first necessarily even realize that that's Kaylee in bed with him. But yeah, you know, Lenny's good, so things are good. And he tries to, you know, stretch his arms and we see as he realizes, you know, yeah, that's really, you know, scary and yeah, it's, it's a really good reveal. And the, I suppose that more or less covers it. I, I really like the moment where Evan realizes, you know, when he's standing there with the, what was it, pledges or rushes or something, one of them, you know, what was it, like, you know, corrects his, you know, pronouncing it wrong and, you know, and then he, you know, goes full frat, 
you never go full fright. And he, you know, and, and then right after he wakes up and he's like, this is not me, this is not who I want to be. And, you know, and yeah, he says, you know, go take a shower and just, you know, that, yeah. And I like the, the brief bit with that, you know, his, his frat bro who, and they point this out in the commentary track too, we see, the first time we see him, we might not even notice, but, you know, Evan is like, you know, he's done with the, and he's come, you know, he, that, that shows us right there. Evan knows his stuff, you know, he studied, he knows exactly what, so he filled it out and it's just, you know, eh, I might as well. Beat the rush, you know, I'm going to go down there and put it. And this other guy walks in in front of him and puts down his paper and then, you know, and then it's, you know, papers down. The guy who passes in front of him, that's the guy who turns out, who's then his frat bro in the future. And, you know, in the frat bro reality. And then, you know, we also, we saw him, you know, we, we got a little bit of a better look at him when he was, you know, throwing popcorn at Thumper. And that's also why, you know, he says, you started it. And, yeah, he gets character moments and he's like, you know, several people think that, and realize that Evan is acting strange, you know, Gwen's, you know, I love it, and I know you, your name is Gwen, <laughs> and, you know, because, of course, we have to have those awkward scenes where the, the character who's in a different reality or time or whatever is saying things that doesn't make sense to the others. I, I, I look forward to with immense glee the day that we can have a movie like that where the character isn't acting in a way that would make everybody else really notice and and yeah and just having those scenes just yeah I, I get that it would take a lot to to wake up from that but yeah anyway yeah you know he has these moments of, of, of all the ones who notice that Evan is saying something weird in that time he's the only one who's truly you know an ass to other you know when you know he's the one who laughs and sets off Evan in the you know when he's with the pledges rushes whatever I am very blissfully ignorant of the ways of the frat but but yeah you know and he's you know he throws his beer at that one of them and just yeah in general you know we we don't really see if Kaylee is is a jerk in that reality but yeah she certainly has sympathy for Tommy still and she notices things about Evan but also really appreciates so yeah, you know, she, she pays attention, she knows him, which isn't true of every relationship, even when the people, you know, are happy or think they are happy. And, and we don't see Thumper a lot in the movie at all, but it is nice, the, you know, the different times we see, you know, he genuinely does care about Evan, you know, when he talks about, you know, do you really want to go back to, you know, time you, you know, this creep had you in your tidy whities and, you know, and, and when he's frat, you know, he, you know, thumper, you know, yeah, you know, with the, the watch thing, a good little confrontation. And, you know, I, I in general like thumper, he's outnumbered. You know, he knows the whole frat is gonna go off on him if, you know, if they want to. He still, you know, he sends the, the pool ball flying into their beer and, you know, he breaks the, you know, the, the pool stick and, you know, yeah, almost attacks Evan when he's a frat. But, but yeah, in general, you know, we, we see a little bit of that in addition to, you know, we, we see Thumper, Evan's mother, and I guess those might be some of the only, and, and the frat brother, in addition to the four, in, in a few different situations and some even different, you know, realities of the, yeah. I also like how the, you know, the memory thing keeps 
increasing like the first time you know it's oh I just put 40 years worth of memories into my brain in less than a year you know in the last year because that's when he's done two and in that you know he messed up Lenny's life but he's still kind of this is going pretty well overall you know sucked being in prison but that reality didn't seem too bad overall Lenny's messed up I can probably fix it you know he's he's popping wheelies in the in the wheelchair and which is again you know in general he's really fun as the wise ass it and clearly like I said in the review Ashton Kutcher is very comfortable in in Evan the 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 wise ass you know but but yeah he's got a lot of great lines and little you know bits you're psychic and you probably saw this coming you know and yeah now but but yeah he's yeah he he feels like he's on a roll it's gonna work out you know and then later when you know it's like I'm surprised he's even moving I guess by then it's like 80 hasn't there been four times I think there's been four time jumps by then so yeah like I said you know surprised he's even you know being able to move it really broke him and then he says you know we got to transfer him to Bellevue tomorrow you know this needs to be dealt with and yeah that means you know tonight has to be when I actually you know go back and for sure fix it you know and the the little details of you know he has to have the you know at first he thinks it's only the diaries but later he realized films can do it as well but but yeah you know when he goes to the prison and he really you know when yeah when he talks to his mother it's like I can't stay in here this is this is awful I'm gonna have to go back again he thinks she brought his books but only some of them the rest are in storage you know because he hasn't needed them for seven years now that he's a frat everything's great he he's not studying he's not you know reading and writing into them the way he was when he was a psych major so yeah they're they're in storage and you know she just left a couple in the house or something you know found them in the attic and you know he go, he walks in with them and I don't know maybe this does happen in prison but that was really high school they you know what's it called dropped his books you know I don't know I've never seen this is the only time I've seen that happen outside of like a high school scene in a movie but but yeah you know and they all grab and he's just got the papers and they're useless to him they're you know so so yeah and he has to you know, he, he goes with the, the one, you know, he does the stigmata thing, which, as I mentioned earlier, shouldn't really work. And then he goes in and he shivs them, one of them in the crotch. I'm not usually, in real life, I'm not in favor of any kind of castration. But in this, he threatens their father and he with with it, and he actually basically does it with you know one of the I don't know it's I suppose it might still be salvageable but still he it's a in the real world I'm not but in some of these fiction yeah you know I'm not necessarily I kind of enjoyed I kind of enjoy seeing this sick you know SOB actually yeah yeah Anyway, yeah, so he, you know, he shivs both of them, or shanks them with a shiv, he shanks them with a shiv, and he, you know, he's going back, and it's like, you know, they, you know, Carlos is holding the cellar, he can only do that for so long, there's so many of them, and I'm guessing this is the rest of the, you know, the, the white nationalists, the, the neo-Nazis in the immediate area at least, and they attack and they grab him and he goes back you know that's one of the times where it's really really tense when he's going back same thing when you know because you're afraid he might not make it same thing when he goes back to the womb but yeah and and then when he wakes up he 
yells the, the thing and they're like, what is going on? You know, Kaylee and Lenny and yeah. And then, you know, suddenly there are no diaries. And he's so, you know, your father did the same thing. And then he's like, I never wrote the diaries. And then, you know, like I said earlier, I think he, there should still be some, but anyway. And, you know, he finds out about the photo album. So he's like, it doesn't need to be words. It just needs to be memories. As long as I can take myself back to a time. Yeah, so so he gets the the film and yeah, you know, which film he watches is dependent on whether you're watching the good version or the <laughs> version of the film. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.